elements of a contract. Before we talk about the elements of a contract, first we have to understand exactly what a contract is. And actually, a contract is very simple. It's a promise. When you hear the word contract, think of the word promise. But it's a promise that is legally enforceable under the law. And if there's a breach, then the law will allow a remedy for that breach. So that's what a, a contract is. It's a legally enforceable promise. Now, we're going to be talking about elements of a contract here. And uh, another word, introductory word here, is that different writers, different textbooks, different legal sources, commentators will, will express the elements of a contract in different ways. Uh, so uh, this, this is one uh, of, of the sets of elements of contracts I think is all-encompassing, and uh, this is the, the uh, list of elements that I teach. Uh, first of all, uh, first element is going to be capacity. That means that, that the person making the promise has to be of a necessary proper age, usually 18, to be able to lawfully be held to the promise that they make. There's another aspect to capacity, and that is this mental element, that they must be of sound mind. Uh, and, and of course, these, these two elements relate to natural persons. When we talk about capacity regarding artificial persons, like uh, in which we call entities, like corporations, partnerships, um, uh, limited liability companies, so forth, uh, and, and even uh, executors and trustees and guardians and agents in general, those folks enter into contracts too. But we, we, we don't worry about or concern ourselves with age or mental capacity there for, capaci uh, for uh, uh, this capacity element, but rather authority. Do these people that enter into the contract on behalf of the corporation or the partnership, do they have authority? Are they authorized to do that? So that's our first element, capacity. Our second element is offer. In fact, let's, let's just take a quick look at this board. Offer, acceptance, consideration. These three elements are what are generally viewed as the classical elements of a contract. But of course, we're adding in this uh, presentation, we're adding consideration of some other uh, elements as well. So let's take these uh, one by one. In addition to capacity on the previous board, we've got offer, an offer to make a contract. What's an offer? Well, the restatement on contract says that an offer is a manifestation of willingness to enter into a bargain. Manifestation of a willingness to enter into a bargain. So made as to justify the other person that their assent is invited and that if they assent to the offer, and we're talking about acceptance here, if they assent to the offer, then that concludes the bargain. They got a deal. So that's what an offer is. I want to do a deal with you, and you manifest that in some way. All right, once you have an offer, then our next element that we look for is acceptance of that offer. And that acceptance under classical uh, common law is that, that it has to be unconditional willingness to be bound by that offer, unconditional. And in some places, we uh, even see the, uh, the term mirror image, that whatever the acceptance is, uh, has to be a mirror image uh, of the offer, exactly. Uh, the offer says, I'll sell you my car for 1000 Acceptance is, I will buy your car for $1,000. And that's mirror image. So you have to have that acceptance. The next element is consideration consideration. Say, once again, what's a contract? It's a promise. Someone's making a promise. So before that person is going to be bound by that promise, they have to, there has to be consideration involved. Person gives a promise, but they're receiving something in return for that promise. And that something they're getting in return for the promise is what we call consideration. And once you have that consideration in exchange for the promise given, you're bound, and you've, that's another element of a contract in place. So you basically have an agreement at that point.
Now, even though you have that agreement at that point, you still may not have an enforceable contract. And that's what we're looking at here. All these are elements of an enforceable contract. Our next one is you must have a mutual agreement between the people, uh, uh, the parties of the um, uh, of this promise, or it could be two promises that are being uh, traded. Uh, there has to be a meeting of the mind. They have to be on the same page. They have to uh, be have a perfect understanding of what they're talking about and be in perfect agreement. Uh, there's an old Eng old English case uh, of. Um, of uh, one farmer selling what they thought was a sterile cow to uh, another farmer. They, they made the deal, and then it turns out that the cow was actually uh, pregnant with a calf. And, and so the question was, well, do we have a contract or not? And the courts ultimately said, no, there was no contract. It wasn't a meeting of the minds because uh, they weren't talking about the same thing. They weren't talking, uh, they weren't involved, they were talking about a sterile cow when in fact they were promising back and forth and selling uh, exchanging between them a, a, a very fertile uh, animal. So you have to have a mutual, uh, mutual meeting of the mind, mutual agreement, everybody on the same page. Uh, legality. Uh, the, the contract has to be legal in all aspects. First of all, in its purpose or subject matter. Uh, if I want to um, make a contract to, to buy fireworks, but it's not the firework season in, in my particular jurisdiction, uh, and uh, that's an illegal contract for me to take uh, delivery of that, or say uh, uh, alcohol of some kind without having that liquor license, or if I'm in, a, in an area that does not allow liquor sales. Uh, so it, it has to be of a proper, uh, has to be legality. What, here's, here's a silly one. What, what about a, uh, uh, someone who uh, employs a hitman? And the hitman actually turns out to be uh, someone wired by the police, catch it, picking up all the all the wheeling and dealing, and then they make the arrest. Well, why can't the person who wanted the killing done sue the supposed hitman for breach of contract for the promises they made? Of course, that's silly, but it's, it underlines the point. The contract has to be a legal uh, a legal contract. It has to be legal in the way it's procured. You can't procure an otherwise legal contract through bribery because that in itself is illegal and the way you carry out the contract has to be carried out in a legal way uh, once again you can't use bribery to carry out a uh, otherwise legal contract otherwise that would would void uh, enforce enforcement of the contract our uh, last element then is proper form we're talking about, does the contract have to be in writing or can it be an oral contract? Well, generally, contracts can be oral. They don't have to be in writing unless there are certain types of contracts. And I've listed a few of these here where a writing is required. Real property transactions must be in writing. Uh, a contract that's not going to be performed, it can't be performed within one year's time. That contract must be in writing. And uh, another example would be a contract uh, where one person guarantees someone else's debt. They're going to pay someone else's debt for them and be bound by that promise. That has to be in writing. These documents, according to this uh, a law that all states have, they're called, it's called the Statute of Frauds. It's an old variation of an old English statute that says certain types of transactions must be in writing and they must be signed by the person who's making the promise, who's going to be bound by their promise. Okay, so proper form and that's our last element. So to summarize, here are our elements of a contract. Capacity, offer, acceptance, consideration, mutual agreement, legality, and proper form. And those are the elements of a contract.